Hey guys, what's up? Back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you my thoughts on the 200 to 500 Nikon 5.6 VR. Okay, this video is going to be a review of this lens. Um, I've had this lens for almost about a year now, and I've used it from everything from mainly wildlife is what I bought it for, uh, photographing birds, um, small animals, things like that, uh, to actually shooting landscapes with it, uh, being able to isolate um, peaks in certain situations. Uh, that I've been out in the field and I've seen and I've been able to utilize this lens for. So let me tell you what I like about it. Okay, first thing that I like about it is that the VR is outstanding. Um, at 500 all the way out, 500 millimeters, um, I've been able to handhold shots uh, and actually break the the one-to-one -one rule or the two-to-one rule that you want to be double whatever your uh, focal length is and I've been able to shoot 400 millimeters uh, or I mean 500 millimeters at 400 shutter speed um, sometimes 300th of a shutter speed or one three hundredth of a second and, and still get sharp images so for per for me personally that's a huge win um, you, you you know, to be able to handhold shots at, at that kind of shutter speed to allow even more light in and keep that ISO down uh, is fantastic. All right, next one is the optical quality. Um, you know, you can talk about VR, you can talk about its versatility, 200 to 500, um, the 5.6 constant f-stop. There's a lot to talk about this lens, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't produce quality images, right? I mean, that's what we're all looking for. That's what we're all um, looking to purchase it or looking in a lens when we own it is whether it's gonna create that high quality, uh, sharp image. Anywhere from 200 millimeters to 500 millimeters, this lens is sharp. And uh, I mean, I've heard some people say that it's soft wide open at 5.6. Uh, I haven't personally experienced that, although I do think its sweet spot is really f8. Um, of course, then again, you're losing that many stops of light. And, and like I said, I, for me, honestly, uh, and I guess it would just depend on what you're shooting at. Um, like if you're shooting a still subject, uh, like for me, like a landscape, like a peak that's off in the distance, Shooting an F8 uh, on a tripod is perfectly acceptable. Uh, if you're shooting you know, wildlife, I'm going to be shooting at 5.6 more often than not. Um, and that's just because I'm trying to allow the most light in uh, while keeping my ISO as low as I can get to get a clean quality image. So how does this lens perform? Well. As you can see right here, I have it attached to my Nikon D850. And uh, for me personally, it, it was about three or four different outings before I found that sweet spot for this lens and, and for this camera. Um, now it may vary between other cameras. I know with the D500 that it works particularly well with the 3D tracking. Um, Whereas with the D850 that I have here, um, I've noticed that it works best on continuous autofocus and on the nine points. Um, so like the dynamic focus where you have the main center point and then the nine surrounding points. Uh, I, I have found, at least for me and from my tests, that works the best, it's the most consistent and it is able to track subjects rather well, and I get more shots that are sharp 
and in focus and in frame than I do um, using any other kind of focusing. So what do I not like about this lens? Well, it is a very large lens, um, especially uh, when you consider the weight is that pretty comparable to like, let's say the Tamron 150 to 600. It, it's pretty comparable. And then of course, uh, the advantage is you're getting the 5.6 constant f-stop, whereas the Tamron you're getting the 6.3, even with the Sigma you're getting the 6.3 and a variable in both. So that's the trade-off. You're going to lose a little bit of focal length to get that constant f-stop, which for me, that's perfectly acceptable. But as you can see, if I zoom this thing out, turn the lock off, right? And if I zoom all the way out, you know, the lens gets very large and that can be a little bit of an issue when hand holding, um, trying to get, you know, follow or track birds in flight, let's say, um, you know, it, it's, it's difficult to carry around for a long day of shooting. It's not something that I would probably enjoy carrying around for more than a few hours. Okay, so the upgrade that I made to this is the foot stand. Now, with the foot stand, uh, this is not the Nikon one that it comes with. I actually got one and it's from iPhoto. And um, it was off of Amazon. And what I like about it is that the bottom plate versus the Nikon one, there's two advantages. Uh, the foot basically is bigger, uh, which is super helpful, especially um, being able to hold it, carry it, balance it in your arms. Or, you know, I use it as a, another point of contact when I'm using this lens. Uh, but also, uh, it's also Arca Swiss on the bottom. So it already works with all my existing tripods. And so I can just slip it right in. I don't have to worry about attaching a, uh, a plate to it or anything like that. It's just ready to go. And so that was the one upgrade that I did make to this. All right, so my final thoughts on this um, is that the focusing is, I would say, 80% there. Um, it will occasionally hunt at 500 millimeters, at 400 millimeters. Um, not very often, but more noticeable at 500 millimeters. Unless, so for like me, I pre-focus to wherever my subject is. Um, and then it seems to do all right. But yeah, the initial focus, if you're just trying to quickly move and catch a bird in flight, it can, hunt and I have lost shots. That's where prime lenses um, kind of are better, but then of course you're looking at uh, quite a bit more money than this lens. And, uh, and that's what I think I like so much about this particular lens is value. Uh, I'm all about value and what you get for your money. And I, I hope that's what you're going to get from this review is that um, this lens brand new, I believe they go for $13.99 still. And that, that's still a really good price for this lens. And uh, I'll put a few more images up uh, at the end of this video and you can see some more of the images that I've shot with this. Uh, if you have any questions about it, please go ahead and comment below and I'll be willing to answer any of the questions that you have. And uh, you know, if you're thinking about getting one of these or if you're on the fence like how I was between this the Sigma offering and the Tamron offering, you know, this is um, this is a really good buy. You know, you're going to pay a little bit more because it's obviously the Nikon brand, but you're getting that constant 5.6. And, um, and, and I think the focusing is just as good, but more, more for me, the, um, the VR in it, the image stabilization in it is, I, I believe, a lot better than the other two lenses. Uh, and that's just from my own personal testing. 
and uh, so that's why I went with this particular lens. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them down in the comments below, and I'll see you in another video.